Okay, so one really important thing you can start doing when you get into the second seat is fruit raid. And fruit raids basically just let you awaken your fruit. And when your fruit gets awakened, the moves on it get so much better and way more powerful. Take the magma fruit, for example. Look at the abilities normally. But when you awaken them, you can do all of this cool stuff and you can even walk on water. So the way you do raids to awaken your fruit is you head over to this cold island over here. You walk into this lab and you enter this code. Then when you look over here to the left, there's a little secret entrance that opens opens up and if you walk into it and then climb up the ladder you can start doing raids with the raid scientist and for every raid you do you need a raid microchip the way you can get this microchip is buy it from the scientist for a hundred thousand belly but you can only do this every two hours another way to get the microchip is to trade in a fruit all you have to do is unstore the fruit from your inventory and then click on the buy slash trade button but you probably only want to be doing this with really bad fruit since you don't really want to trade like a dough fruit just to start one raid and once you have your microchip you walk into this little capsule over here and then you click on this button and then there should be a total of five islands that spawn with a big boss at the fifth island and the boss is really powerful the theme and difficulty of the raid depends on what type of raid you. there's a lot of raids in the game you can get into even better ones later when you unlock the third seat but for example if you want to awaken your flame fruit you're going to choose a flame raid and one really important thing about this game is that you have to complete the raid with the flame fruit to actually be able to awaken it like if you complete a flame raid with a buddha then you will have potential to awaken your your flame fruit so once you're done completing the raid with your flame fruit you get teleported to a place with a guy called the awakenings expert and here you can awaken each move individually so it's pretty bad that you can't awaken all of it at the same time but that means you have to do five raids to fully awaken your fruit and it also costs a buttload of fragments because you need to pay a decent amount for each time you awaken one move and the amount of fragments you need to pay depends on the ability and depends on the fruit worse fruits usually have less fragment payment so you probably only want to focus on a awakening the best fruits you have you can get in the second seat that not all players know about and this fighting style is one of the best in the game for pvp I'm obviously talking about superhuman. And to get superhuman, these are the requirements. You need to have 3 million belly sitting around, obviously access to the second seat, and a 300 mastery on electric, dark step, water kung fu, and dragon's breath. Many of you don't know about dragon's breath, but it's a fighting style that you can get once you reach the second seat, and you just buy it on this bridge over here. And once you have all of these requirements, you can head over to the snowy island over here. In this secret location, there's a guy called a martial arts teacher, and then you can simply buy it for 3 million belly and the reason this is really good is not only because it's one of the best in the game because you can upgrade it into the best fighting style in the game god human but you can only do that later once you hit the third scene keep in mind that this fighting style is really good only for bounty hunting so if you want to stick to grinding then you should probably just go with shark man karate so next up we have an accessory called the ghoul mask and the ghoul mask is a must-have accessory once you get into the second scene and the reason for this is that it's really cheap to buy and the benefits it gives you are more than worth it it's really good for people that want to grind with the buddha fruit and the place that you buy it is on the cursed ship and it only costs 50 ectoplasm ectoplasm is something that you get from killing npcs on the cursed ship and once your quests reach the cursed ship it should be really easy to get your hands on 50 of it and the reason it's really good is that because every time you do damage to a player you heal back 10 percent of it and against npcs it's 2.5 which is also really good and the best thing about it is that it increases a player's movement speed by 35 percent and it also increases your energy by 500. So speed and regenerating with health are some things that are really good for Buddha fruit users. And the reason for this is that when you're using a Buddha fruit to grind, and you even take that little bit of damage, you instantly want to heal it up. And being able to run faster means that you can outrun your enemies and not let them hit you. But with the overpowered reach of the Buddha fruit, you can still hit them. So this thing is something that's really cool. It's hockey colors. Well, you might be thinking that hockey colors aren't that important, but there's two things that are really good about them. So later in the game once you get to the third so you're gonna need some specific hockey colors to spawn in the final boss rip indra and the second thing that's really good about them is that they're really cool and they make your hockey 10 times better to look at so the way you change your hockey color is there's an npc that spawns at a bunch of different locations throughout the whole of the second sea and if you ever see him spawn he lets you buy a random hockey color from him and these cost 1500 fragments but this is only for regular colors as for legendary colors they sell for 
7,500 fragments, but they look a lot better, so they're definitely worth it. The NPC that you buy it from is called the Master of Auras, and he takes 5 minutes to spawn and 20 minutes to despawn, so you have 20 whole minutes to buy your aura. And if he's not in a spawn location that you're at, then it's probably better to server hop to try and find him. But this is only for people that don't have a lot of Robux. If you have a bunch of Robux, you can just head to the cafe, and then you get this chest, and you go all the way here to the bottom. And once you do that, if you talk to this guy right here, you can literally buy all your hockey colors with Robux. Literally any in the game. But I don't think a lot of you watching just have millions of spare Robux to spend on this, so you should probably just stick to the other method. So everybody knows that in the first seed, the best fighting style to buy is Water Kung Fu, because it's the best for grinding. But did you know that you can upgrade Water Kung Fu to a thing called Sharkman Karate, and that makes it even better for grinding? The reason for this is that Sharkman Karate is the version 2 of Water Kung Fu, which means it deals so much more damage and the abilities are 10 times better. And the way you get it is that you head over to the Skull Island and you talk to this guy here named Digrock the Shark Man. You have to complete the quest that he gives you, which involves getting a water key and finding this boss behind the island. And the key has a really low percent chance of dropping, so if you want to complete this quest fast, you have to have double drops enabled. And once you complete the quest, it literally costs 2.5 million belly and 5,000 fragments to buy it, so it's really expensive. But trust me, this is definitely worth it, and it's going to make your grinding life in the second sea so much easier. But keep in mind that you do have to have a 400 mastery on Water Kung Fu, so if you don't have double mastery, this is probably going to take you a bit of time to get. And this is also something that's really good for Buddha users, because this is definitely the best fighting style to use with the Buddha. And the reason for this is that its passive ability does not have any delay. You know that once you get into the second sea, you can literally upgrade your race. So the way you upgrade your race to version 2 is you head over to this huge island over here, and then behind this blue mushroom, there should be a guy called the Awakenings Expert. And if you didn't know what races are, I don't blame you. Most people that just get into the second sea have no idea that this is even a thing in the game. So basically how it works is that 50% of players that join the game spawn in as human. And the other races in the game are Angel, Sharkman, Ghoul, Mink, and Cyborg. But since most of you are human and you won't be able to change your race for a while, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to do it if you're a human. So actually, the first quest is the same for every race, so everybody watching can follow through for this one. The way it works is once you've talked to this guy, you have to complete the quest that he gives you, and then you should be searching for three different types of flowers. And these are the spawn locations of every single one. And to get the yellow flower, you have to keep killing NPCs from here till one of them drops it. And to upgrade your race into version 3, you head over to this huge tree over here, and then there should be a secret entrance right behind the mountain. And then once you talk to this guy over here, he'll give you a quest. So all you have to do is kill three different types of bosses. And these bosses are pretty low levels for the second C, so you should be able to do it. And remember, don't leave the game once you've equipped in the quest, because then you have to go re-equip the quest and kill all those three NPCs all over again. And the NPCs that you have to kill is Diamond, Jeremy, and Fajita. And then later, once you get to the third C, you can upgrade your race into V4, and this is what makes it really over overpowered, but don't really need to worry about that for now. Once you get into the second sea, you're gonna notice some pretty cool sea events, and one of them is the sea beast spawning in. So the sea beast is a mini boss in the game, and it has a ton of health, but it gives you a lot of rewards if you end up killing it. The way to spawn a sea beast is just be randomly out somewhere in the waters, just driving around on your boat, and then there's a random chance that the sea beast spawns it. And sometimes sea beasts even spawn in groups of three, which is really scary because they're almost impossible to kill, even for players that are max level. But sea events are not the only ways that sea beasts can get into the game. When a player earns a 10 million bounty, they can summon sea beasts that have around 20,000 HP and 35,000 if they're in the third sea. But these sea beasts don't drop anything when defeated. Sea beasts can also be spawned in by an NPC called the Tidekeeper, which is a boss on the Skull Island. And keep in mind that sea beasts are a really good way to grind money and fragments, so you want to keep a lookout for these guys and kill them whenever you get the chance. Did you know that once you get into the second sea, you can actually reset your stats without using any codes or paying Robux? So all you have to do is you have to head over to the huge bridge on the map, and around halfway on it, there should be a guy there called Plokester. And all you have to do is, oh, is pay him a mere amount of 2,500 
100 fragments. And then you should get one stat reset point. But make sure you upgrade your stat points properly because you don't want to have to keep giving this guy 2,500 every time you want to change them. So everybody knows that the best grinding fruit in the game for first C players is probably the magma fruit. But once you get into the second C, you should have rolled the blocks with gacha enough times to get your hands on the Buddha fruit. The Buddha fruit is the literal best fruit in the whole game for grinding quests. And it literally makes them 10 times easier. And the reason for this is that the Buddha's overpowered range just lets you hit enemies without you being able to hit them. And once you get to the second C, this is definitely going to come in handy a ton. And keep in mind that this is literally just the base version of the Buddha. And you can also awaken it by doing raids, which makes it so much better. And also, it's a really cool fruit. I mean, look at the transformation. You're just a huge person that's glowing. Pretty cool in my opinion. And to get the Buddha fruit, you can either roll it from the blocks for gacha, or you can wait for it to be in stock. And when you buy it, it costs 1.2 million belly, but that should be pretty easy to have if you're in the second seat. But keep in mind that it only has a 5% of being in stock, so it's probably gonna take a bit to get it. But by using Discord servers and fruit notifiers, it should be pretty easy to know when it's in stock. And to fully awaken the Buddha fruit, you need 14,500 fragments, but you only need to awaken one ability, so that shouldn't be a problem. Did you know that you could also change your race once you get to the second seat? Okay, so all you have to do is head over to the cafe and you find the guy named Norp who's just sitting on his computer. And if you pay him the small sum of 3,000 fragments, he would randomly change your race. And the random races that you can get from him are human, angel, shark, and rabbit. And also keep in mind that you cannot re-roll the same race that you already have. So for example, if you're already an angel, then you can't really get an angel again. That would just be a huge waste of fragments. Alternatively, you can also buy the race change in the shop for a small sum of Robux. But if you don't want to waste your Robux, I definitely recommend just sticking to Norp. So fragments are something that you're going to instantly notice once you get into the second C. And this is because it's a new type of currency for players second C and above. And it's going to be used to buy a whole ton of things. And if you want to know a way to get a ton of fragments really fast, check out this other video of mine. But keep in mind that to finish the game and get to the third C, you will need a huge load of fragments. And you can also buy a bunch of other things around the map with it. One of the best ways to get fragments in the game is by doing fruit raids. You just want to equip the flame raid and just keep doing it over and over as many times as you can. Because each raid literally gives you a thousand fragments. But keep in mind that fragments are not as easy to get your hands on as normal money. So don't be surprised if you can't get your hands on a huge amount of fragments really fast. So another benefit of getting to the second C is that you unlock the ability to equip titles. And some titles just look really badass and you definitely want to get your hands on a bunch of them. You can get titles by doing various things around the game like killing bosses and even some YouTubers. And the way you change your titles is that you head over to the cafe, collect this chest, and then you go down here to the secret room. And then there should be this funny looking dog penguin person. And if you go talk to him, you should be able to see every title in the game and which ones that you can equip. And also, the better the title that you have on, the players around you know what you're made of. So you want to get your hands on the best ones possible.